Ezekiel chapter 24. Well, Ezekiel preached to the people through acted parables. That is, he acted out something which was to teach them. And also things happened to Ezekiel, such as the death of his wife, which were used by God to try to talk to the people of Judah. Now, the problem is, when we talk to people and just tell them the gospel, often it's just words. But, of course, it should be our way of life in practice, what they see with their eyes, which makes the word of God become flesh. And that's why Jesus is called the word made flesh, because all the wonderful things of God's word were seen in his actual person, in his life, in his being, and not just the theory of his words. And that's how it should be with us, that people should see in us Jesus Christ. They should see in us God's word. And Peter talks about that when he says that if a woman has got a husband that doesn't believe, he might even be one to Jesus Christ without her saying anything, without the word, by her example. And so this is why Ezekiel used these acted parables where he didn't say anything, but he just made a point. Now, here in chapter 24, the word of God comes to him and he's told, set on a cauldron. Now, a cauldron is like a big, open, metal, boiling pan. You might have heard of witches' cauldrons in stories. Well, this was a real cauldron. And he was told to set this cauldron on, on a fire, and pour water into it. Gather its pieces into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with the best bones. Take the best animals of the flock, and also a pile of wood, and make it boil well. Yes, let its bones be boiled in its midst. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the city of blood, that's Jerusalem, to the cauldron whose rust is still in it, and whose rust is not gone out of it. Take out of it piece after piece, for her blood is in the midst of her, so that it may cause wrath to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood on the bare rock that it should not be covered. Woe to the city of blood! I will make the pile of firewood great. Heap on more wood, make the fire hot, boil the flesh, make thick the broth, and let the bones be burned. Then set it empty on its coals, that it may be hot, and its brass may be hot, so that its filthiness may be, may be melted, that its rust might be consumed out of it. Now, what this means is that there was going to come a great judgment upon Jerusalem, and the Babylonians were going to burn Jerusalem with fire. And the, the wicked people of Jerusalem were going to be like the bones that were burnt, or that were boiled, boiled and boiled until they were absolutely dry. Now, later on in Ezekiel, in chapter 37, we read about the dry bones of Israel coming together, click, clock, click, forming skeletons. And then the Spirit of God, the breath of God, comes into them and makes them alive, and flesh appears, and they stand up on their feet, a great army. So the idea of these punishments of God that were coming upon Jerusalem was not just because he was mad with them and wanted to punish them in a really horrible way, but in order eventually to reform them. So all God's punishments, his judgments, are designed to try to bring about repentance and change. And the idea was that the cauldron, that's Jerusalem, would get burnt and burnt and makes, made so hot that all its rust and bad things would come out of it. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but that was God's intention. So it's not that God's sort of all-powerful and he gets furiously mad and lashes out at people. Not at all. He loves his people, and he really didn't want to do this. And I think that Ezekiel is telling them this, rather like Jonah said to Nineveh, in 40 days Nineveh will be destroyed so that they might repent, and Nineveh repented, and so it didn't happen. 
So he's trying to get them to repent. Then Ezekiel says, The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, behold, I will take away from you the desire of your eyes with a stroke, but you must not mourn nor weep. Sigh, but not aloud. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your headdress on you. Put your shoes on your feet. Don't cover your lips. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. So Ezekiel's wife is called the desire of his eyes. Now what that means is that when man and woman get married, a man should not always be looking at other women. His wife should be the desire of his eyes, and the Proverbs say this as well. And that's a bad thing in society today, that men and women are married, and then they go off with someone else, and they look at somebody else, and think, mm, he's very handsome, or oh, she's very beautiful. But when you're married, that is for life. And you make a commitment, and as you grow older together, and you're not so handsome, and you're not so beautiful as you get older, well, that's okay. That doesn't matter, because you love each other, and God has bound you together. So, his wife is taken away from him. She dies. And God says, don't go into the usual mourning. And the people said to him, won't you tell us what these things are to us, that you do like this? So again, it was like an acted parable, though it actually happened. His wife did actually die. But it was to try to show the people something. Because, of course, they said, well, what's going on? Why aren't you crying? And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Tell the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will destroy my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the desire of your eyes. This is the temple. And your sons and your daughters, whom you've left behind, shall fall by the sword. But you shall not cover your lips. You shall not mourn nor weep but you shall go and groan in your sins. Thus Ezekiel shall be a sign to you. According to all that he has done, you will do. In other words, when the temple was finally burnt and destroyed by the Babylonians, then the Jerusalem Jews were rushed off into captivity. They weren't allowed time to mourn and to weep. They had to put their shoes on their feet, and they had to to just go as they were into captivity. And then they would have realized that Ezekiel was assigned to them. And God says, when this comes, then you will know that I am the Lord. It will be in the day, son of man, when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that upon which they have set their heart. So then, Jerusalem and the temple, they really loved it. It was the desire of their eyes, they were so proud of it, but it was going to be taken away from them. Just as Ezekiel's wife, like mummy is to, to me, to daddy, was their great pride and their great joy and the desire of their eyes. And yet, although they thought the temple was so wonderful... As one of the other prophets says, they cried with their tears all over the altar of the temple. Yet they had in that temple idols, as Ezekiel points out. And so it's no good just loving your religion. Oh, how we love the building of the church, how we love this and that in the church. That is not the point. We can be there and still have idols in our hearts. And so although it was their glory, they were proud, oh, look at our wonderful temple, isn't it beautiful? Their hearts were very far away, and they had put idols into that temple. And so poor Ezekiel, he lost his wife, but he was used as a lesson to them. And again, if they had realized it, then they could have repented and stopped it all coming about.